So you want to become a full stack developer, but you are overwhelmed by the number of programming languages and frameworks available out there. Well, if that's the case, this is the video for you. If you are new to this channel, welcome. I am a developer with more than 10 years of experience on both the backend using technologies such as Java, Kotlin or Spring, and on the front-end using various UI libraries ranging from jQuery to Angular or React. In the next few minutes, I'm going to share with you the learning roadmap and the timeline I wish I had when I started my dev journey. The aim is to keep the distractions away and only focus on the tools which will maximize the return on your invested time and effort. So, when you choose to learn a new language or framework, you should always try to achieve the following. Choose tools that are in demand in the job market, Make sure that the tools have a long-term perspective and plenty of development support. And last but not least, find languages and ecosystems which give you knowledge that can be easily expanded in other areas if needed. I'll get back to this point in a second, since this is one of the main skills a developer should have. Okay, so here is the hard reality. The main thing a full-stack developer needs to know is not coding. Let me explain. Writing code is simply the way in which developers are solving problems. In order to solve said problems, you have to understand what the issues are and then come up with a concrete set of steps to apply your solution. In other words, when coding, you need to employ your problem-solving skills and come up with efficient algorithms. This has nothing to do with the programming language you are using. Therefore, before even considering learning a programming language, make sure you have a good grasp of the basics. Spend some time attending some good algorithms courses, like the ones Coursera is offering, and learn to think correctly about problems and solutions in the computer world. If you have a degree in computer science or an associated field, you might already have this knowledge. Otherwise, please try spending a few months really learning algorithms, data structures, design patterns, and other basics you will use for the rest of your career. Call me old-fashioned, but I still believe that the first programming language you are learning should be a proper, object-oriented language with a strong static type system and multi-thread support. There is a reason C++ is still one of the most used languages for didactic purposes. It is low-level enough to force you to think about memory allocation, pointers, or addresses, while also providing enough constraints to enforce good habits in the long term. Don't worry, I'll not suggest C++ as your first language. I might be subjective, but I consider Java as a better option for various reasons I'll explain in a second. However, for a bit of context, I want to mention a couple of alternatives to Java first. A possible better option could be C which offers the same benefits Java does, but in a slightly more expressive way. A possible disadvantage is that you'll probably end up locked in into the Microsoft tech stack, but with tools such as the .NET framework, which covers everything from microservices to mobile apps and seamless cloud integration with Azure, you are pretty much set up for life. Another option for Java as a backend solution is Python. It doesn't really follow my previous rules, since it isn't strongly typed and it is not excelling at leveraging multi-threaded support, but Python is the second most popular language in the world, has great support for web development with frameworks such as Django or FastAPI, and is the preferred language for various branches of AI development. Okay, so now you know some of the alternatives, and, in all honesty, you'll do just fine if you master any of those. I come from a Java background, and this feels the most natural to me. However, note that there are objective reasons to choose Java. On one hand, it still is extremely popular all over the world, with a lot of the big tech companies heavily relying on it. As a result, Java is not going anywhere anytime soon, and they have a long roadmap ahead. On the other hand, the real power of Java is in its Java runtime environment. I don't want to get too technical here, so just know that your Java code is compiled into an intermediary format called bytecode. That bytecode is then executed by the Java runtime environment. As a result, other JRE-based programming languages, such as Scala, Kotlin, or Clojure, to name a few, emerged. Believe me, some of these follow different programming approaches than Java, so most of the time you'll have a completely different dev experience. However, all these languages compile to bytecode, they can use Java code or libraries, and are executed by the JVM. You might think that these associated programming languages are just small projects and experiments. This could not be further from the truth. Scala, for instance, is one of the main programming languages at Twitter, while Kotlin replaced Java as the de facto solution for building Android apps. 
Head First Java was my first book on the subject and it really is a great read for those with less experience. Next, I really recommend the modern Java in action book to consolidate your knowledge. In my experience, you'll need at least six months of consolidated learning and exercising to gain a good understanding of the language. Next, you'll need to expand into web development and there is no better option than the Spring ecosystem. It's really easy to get started with Spring these days through their starter wizard and by employing Spring Boot to configure and maintain your project. Learning Spring is a pretty complex and time-consuming endeavor. I am a big fan of reading books to gain a good understanding of the basics and an even bigger fan of the inaction series from Manning. Reading Spring in action is a must and overall, I believe it will take you around two years to get from zero to a Java developer comfortable working with anything in the Spring ecosystem. We'll get to discuss frontend in a second, but first there are two additional topics I want to briefly touch on. Every time you'll work on a backend solution, you'll end up persisting user data in some type of data storage. There are various options here and the Spring Data project provides helpful integrations for vendors such as Redis or Mongo. However, in my experience, in most scenarios, you can still rely on plain old battle-tested SQL and on a vendor such as Postgres. Together with a powerful ORM such as Hibernate and leveraging Spring Data's code generation capabilities, working with databases is a breeze these days. Finally, your code needs to be deployed somewhere in the cloud. Of course, you could use a popular platform as a service solution such as Heroku or simply dockerize your Spring Boot app and simply host it into one or more load balanced EC2 instances. Okay, now for the front end part, let's see how many people I'll be able to offend with my opinions. Let's get the obvious out of the way. You really need to know JavaScript and TypeScript. I don't see any reason to start a project without TypeScript these days, but since it is all compiled into plain JavaScript executed in the browser, you should know the basics. JavaScript the good part is a good place to start, and the you don't know JavaScript series is a must in my experience. Once you get used to the language, focus on concepts such as async programming and functional programming to complete your knowledge about programming paradigms. The flexibility of JavaScript and some of its more weird parts is one of the main reasons I'm advocating to start your coding journey with a more vigorous, put-together programming language. I know JavaScript is ruling the world, but the freedom and the flexibility it provides can lead to some bad habits, at least for inexperienced developers. As a quick side note, the browsers offer a wide range of APIs these days, so it is always a good idea to stay on top of that, especially since web apps grow in features and power at a fast pace these days. Now, for the fun part, you'll need to pick up a UI library to complete your stack. The community is more than divided on this topic, but I'll just leave the metrics to speak for themselves. React is still the most popular library out there, and despite a decline in interest, its usage is still growing. Besides the great adoption, which guarantees job security and long-term prospects, React comes back with features such as function components, hooks, JSX, or the context API, which, in the meantime, were adopted by newer libraries such as Solid or Quick. Remember that one of the main criteria for choosing a tool is the option to transition the knowledge you acquired while working with it to other tools as well. Finally, it's advisable to use meta frameworks such as Next.js on top of your UI libraries these days, but with all the previous knowledge, the learning curve on this one should be really smooth. Objectively, you'll probably need one or two years to comfortably work on the front end, so you are probably looking at at least three years to get to a point where you can jump anywhere on the stack and be productive. Don't worry though, you'll start seeing the results of your work way sooner. I know the roadmap looks overwhelming, but you'll see better and better results as the time passes by. Also, on my channel, I am presenting a lot of newer tech and alternatives to these established solutions, and I believe that any smart developer will end up leveraging these simpler, more efficient approaches moving forward. However, mastering the basics and having a strong foundation will always help you to both better understand the solutions you are working on and to move faster in your day-to-day -day job. If you've made it this far, congrats. You are now one of the select few who can help me fight the YouTube algorithm by liking this video. Let me know in the comments if you don't agree with my suggestions and until next time, thank you for watching.